another episode of Please Don't Make a Scene. In today's episode, we are actually going to be talking about two new releases. Um, first, we're going to talk about Hacksaw Ridge. And secondly, we're going to talk about The Accountant, the new um, Ben Affleck action thriller kind of movie. Hacksaw Ridge is, as I said, directed by Mel Gibson. And it's his first... Um, time directing in I think 10 years. So it's the story of uh, Desmond Doss, a uh, American soldier during the Second World War who was a conscientious objector. It means he wouldn't actually uh, fire a weapon. Um, instead he worked as a field medic in which he excelled. Um, he actually he is the only conscientious objector in the history of uh, I guess mankind that has gotten the Congressional Medal of Honor, the highest, you know, uh, achievement, achievable honor uh, to be re to to receive. Um, with, and he did without ever even touching a gun, well, at least ever firing a gun. And that's that's the story. It's based on a true story, uh, so I will get a little spoilery. I will get a little. I'll try to keep it down low with the spoiler, but there will be some spoilers. Just warning you. Um. But yeah, so the movie is about Desmond Doss, his, um, his journey from, you know, young, uh, hapless boy to a grizzled war veteran, if you will, if you could call it that. And I just have to say, right off the bat, I had a very, very hard time um, looking at this movie objectively, to just look at it as a movie, because I, I have kind of a hard time with uh, organized religions. So, you know, I don't mind people being religious. They have all the reason in the world, you know, or all reasons to be, be religious if they want to be. That's not, um, that's not for me to judge. But if I can, if I can um, avoid, uh, you know, the, the uh, avoid religion as much as I can, you know, I try, I, I do. And, you know, I watch movies where people are religious, you know, I don't, I don't mind it, but, you know, Actually, watching religious movies where religion, uh, religion is um, the focus of the, the the movie is something I, I try to steer clear of. And going into this movie, I didn't know he was um, that he was so religious. He's Christian, some sort of Episcopalian. I'm not sure actually what kind of Christian he is, but you know, it's not just he's not your garden variety Christian. He's of a certain uh, uh, um, tenet, if you will. And this is what uh, stops him from touching a gun. Well, technically, it, it's what stops him from using a gun. Um, it's for personal reasons he won't even touch a gun. And <clears throat> if, they've, if they had kept it at that, he said, no, I will, not, I will not use a gun. I can perform my duties as a field medic without using a gun. Um, which they accept. They accept. I would have been fine with it, but the movie kept going to the um, the the uh, the religious viewpoint. It wasn't it wasn't just about oh uh, the bravery of one man saving that many people. Um, he saves like seventy five people all by himself um, during his uh, tour, if you will. I instead, they they they, they credit his his um, his feats to uh, God. You know, instead of actually praising the man, they praise um, the fact that his faith allowed him to do this. Um, other than that, though, let's just, you know, let's leave that. Um, what else is there in the movie? Well, you know, on a, on a technical level, the movie is pretty good. It's not great. It's pretty good. First of, first of all... Mel Gibson knows how to direct violence. We all know this. Um, say what you will about Braveheart. Um, but the uh, action scenes, the battle scenes are great. You know, he really, he portrays the violence very realistically. Um, but still, still making it entertainment. And entertaining, sorry. And he just knows his way around violence. Which kind of makes sense if you look at the person that is Mel Gibson. <laughs> Sorry. And it's the same with Hacksaw Ridge. The battle scenes are great. 
Um, they're kind of small scale, mostly, and it condensed down to this small portion of the battlefield where these, like, 50 or 60 American soldiers are fighting against uh, maybe uh, a couple hundred uh, Japanese soldiers. Quick side note, I've never seen so many people uh, flying through the air while being on fire in a movie. There's just so many people just uh, in slow motion, flying always like this, oh, while on fire. Um, it's just something I noticed. They're all over the place. Um, so yeah, the battle scenes are great. You know, the actors seems to um, up the ante while actually doing the uh, action scenes. However, the first third of the movie takes place before the war, uh, back in America. We get a little bit of a backstory with Desmond about his family. We also get to see him finding the love of his life, played by Teresa Palmer. This, these scenes, especially especially right in the beginning of the movie, are so cringeworthy. I I don't know what happened. I don't know. Mel Gibson just can't seem to direct, you know, just people talking to each other. People were overacting. So everybody talked with this very cartoonish uh, southern accent. Everyone seemed like a cartoon character. They didn't seem like real people. And this was not just a couple of people, you know, this was everyone. The dialogue was terrible. The acting was horrible. Uh, especially Andrew Garfield, who had this dumb grin on his face. You know, the first, the first, like, 40 minutes of the movie, he walked around like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just ridiculous. And there were scenes when he was on a, he was on a date with Teresa Palmer. We wouldn't stop staring at her with that with that creepy smile. They were in a movie theater. The movie started. Instead of watching the movie, he was looking at her like. And I get it. It's supposed to um, relay this feeling of affection towards her. That you know the the outside world doesn't affect him. Um, all all he sees is this person he loves. So yeah. But instead of coming off as very affectionate and very loving and kind of cute in a quirky way, it just comes off, he gives off a very creepy stalker vibe. Because that, that grin, just, that grin makes him look psychotic almost. You know? I don't know, it might just be me. And the same with Hugo Weaving, he plays um, the father, a World War I uh, veteran with uh, uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome and a, a heavy alcohol problem. And him as well just overacts terribly in the beginning of the movie. He he overacts all the way through this first part of the movie that he's in. And I'm just saying, is how could people praise this acting? I've heard people praise his acting, and I'm just what? No, no, it's horrible. Except for the last scene he's in, where he, he almost gets very uh, he suddenly gets very reserved. Um, and. The acting becomes very subtle. And it was just, wow, where did that come from? Maybe maybe this is shaping up, shaping up. But then he's not in the movie anymore. The other actors in the movie are kind of hit and miss. Vince Vaughn is great. Um, he does a great drill sergeant. Uh, you know, the, 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 the typical screaming at the, uh, the uh, soldiers, you know, calling them names, you know, making them... Um, Hum humiliating them, the, the regular stuff, but he actually does this um, fairly well. And it's nice to see him in a uh, dramatic role, which we haven't seen since, I guess, like, domestic disturbance? He did actually start out as a dramatic actor, you know. But then, you know, we all know him from Wedding Crashers and, like, uh, uh, Swingers, of course, was like one of his first movies, but anyway. In this, he, he, he comes back, he, he's back in in a dramatic role, and he does it well. He actually can act. So hopefully we'll see more of that in the future from Mr. Vaughn. Other than that, we have a lot of bit parts, and we have a uh, actually pretty good performance by Sam Worthington. People do tend to give him a little more flack than I think he deserves. I mean, he's not a great actor, not at all. He's, he's, he's an okay actor. But people just, oh my God, he's so horrible. Um, and I can agree to a certain extent, he's not the greatest actor. But in this movie, just as Vince Vaughn, he surprises by doing a pretty good dramatic role. Then we have Teresa Palmer. Uh, just like in the last episode when I talked about um, uh, Rachel McAdams in Doctor Strange, Teresa Palmer in Hacksaw Ridge is criminally underused. She is uh, 
the one thing on screen during that first third of the movie that you really um, levitate towards. Especially when you're when she's sitting next to Andrew Garfield with his stupid grin. She's just amazing next to him because he's so horrible. That's the acting. That's the acting. Uh, very hit or miss. Other than that, there's not really much to say about it because it, the movie is so focused on the the um, the religious aspects of the story. Um, I mean, you have you have good battle scenes, but there's not really an arc to the to the character. I mean, he starts out as this happy-go-lucky kid who just wants to help people. Uh, during no part of this movie does he kind of lose his faith, you know, uh, am I doing the right thing? But then he regains it and saves these people. No, he just, he just, he stands fast, he stands fast on his beliefs all through the movie. And this is what, this is what saves him. I mean, he is basically untouchable throughout the movie. There's one scene, I suppose, when he is incarcerated. But he never really loses his faith. He keeps praying, but he's, he's, he starts crying, you know. He doesn't say, you know, am I doing the right thing, Lord? But you kind of see it in him. But the scene is like, what, th three minutes long? So I wouldn't count it as a low point. So he doesn't have an arc. He starts out, he starts out here. Man of faith, wanting to help people. And he ends up here. A man of faith, wanting to help people and having helped people. Never doubts himself. He is just there, doing what he's supposed to do, and saving all these people without ever getting hit by a bullet, while people are just dying, dying like you know, flies around him. And it's almost like they're like advertising like Christianity. You won't be shot. Just, I I couldn't stomach it. I couldn't stomach it. And for that reason, I couldn't really look at it objectively. So what would I rate this movie, you know? I will laud it for its technical uh, proficiency. It's not a bad movie. If I can just... kind of put the religious aspect to the side, I would give this a 6 out of 10. The second movie we're going to talk about is, like I said, The Accountant. Uh, directed by Gavin O'Connor, starring Ben Affleck, Anna Kendrick, J.K. Simmons, and John Bernthal. This was one of the blandest movies I've seen this year. It wasn't really a bad movie, but it was certainly not a good movie. But uh, The Accountant revolves around The Accountant. A man with a high-functioning form of autism, which makes him great at math, uh, great at learning things, but horrible in social situations. And he's figured out that the most lucrative form of accounting is working for criminals. Uh, the mafia, the drug cartels, seedy uh, multinational companies, and shady oil sheiks. This do, however, put him in harm's way from time to time. And that is why he has become very proficient in you know, martial arts and gun fu, if you will. Gunplay. And the story revolves around him doing the accounts for this big robotics company. And he is figuring out that someone has been siphoning money out of the company for the last 15 years. Millions and millions of dollars. Uh, and just when he's about to figure out why, um, they fire him. You know, they give him his check, you say, we don't need your services anymore, get out of here. But that's not really how he works, you know. He has to fulfill what he starts doing. It's part of the autism. So he keeps digging on his own, which, well, puts him in harm's way. And that ends him up doing a lot of martial arts and gun fu. You know, a lot of punching, a lot of shooting, and a lot of running. In the middle of this, he has to protect Anna Kendrick's character, an accountant uh, working for the company, who helped him figure this out. So they start running from various henchmen and assassins. That's the plot. Simple enough plot. Um, you don't need much more in an action movie. But 
what this movie does, or the script rather, is that it has like two or three subplots which are completely unnecessary. You have the National Treasury agent uh, trying to hunt this accountant down have, and have been doing it for the last 10 years. Uh, you have uh, the flashbacks about his uh, childhood where he learns all this stuff where we find out that he is autistic. And um, you have the story about his relationship with his brother, his kid brother, that you know kind of starts up but never goes anywhere. And you have this budding sort of romance between him, between him and Anna Kendrick, and they all start out fine. You're like, okay, that's a lot of that's a lot of plot strands, but okay. But in the end, they really they don't tie any of them up. It all just becomes ways of giving us exposition, exposition we don't need because it is given in the main plot, the mystery around the robotics company. So really, they could have cut more or less all of the subplots and just focused on the mystery, the action, and the chemistry between Affleck and Kendrick. Because they do have a lot of chemistry and if they would have allowed them more than 15 minutes, 15 minutes of screen time together, that could have actually added a lot of heart to this otherwise very cold movie. Because that's just what this is. It is a cold, bland movie where the actors are just acting enough so they actually seem to give a damn. Because no one here is going to win any awards. The, the one minor standout is Ben Affleck, who actually um, portrays a person with high-functioning autism pretty well. This is not really enough so that you can enjoy the movie. It has all the, the ingredients to make a good movie, they just don't use enough of any of them. And instead you get this gray like doughy mess that really doesn't amount to anything in the end. Too much exposition, which is just boring to listen to. And that means that they have to cut back on the action, so we only have like two or three really good action scenes. But they have to have some action, so they have to cut back on the uh, the relationship between Kendrick and Affleck, so we don't really get that either. We're, we're constantly being shortchanged throughout the movie. So in the end, you know, like I said, we end up with something that is painfully average. And that's really all you can say about it. And I'm giving it a 5 out of 10. So, that was today's episode. Um... And next week, we're going to do something special. As you might know, the Stockholm Film Festival is going to start on now on Wednesday, the 9th of November. And I have um, quite a few tickets bought for that festival. I'm actually going to go see 19 movies <laughs> over the next um, 11 days. And I will be reviewing all 19 movies over the coming three episodes. So there's going to be like a festival special for the next three episodes. We're going to talk about a bunch of, you know, foreign films, you know, kind of smaller indie films. And I will try to cover as much of it on site, actually. I will be on the red carpet for one of the movies. And I will be, um, I will be at an interview with, one, with a director of one of the movies. I won't be interviewing him, of course. I don't have quite enough pull yet. But I will be <laughs> filming the interview, at least. So that's what's coming up. The next three episodes are going to be festival specials. So until next time, uh, have a good one.